This is WMVF News Today at 5. Well, folks, it is finally game day for the Shants and the Badgers. We have everything you need to know to prepare to cheer on Coastal Carolina live from Omaha. Plus, it's taken almost a year to find compromise between the city and our local veterans, but now a deal has been reached to keep a yearly tradition safe for everyone. And behind bars, a man arrested after breaking into a home, the scary situation one woman woke up to. But first, we have got rain on the radar right now for your early morning commute. Scattered showers across the border belt spreading down into the PD. So I-95 is going to be rainy all the way through Dillon County and to Robson County. But the heaviest of the rain right now is right on top of the Grand Strand. 17 bypass and then along Highway 22 all the way to Highway 90 and inland is a little bit soggy. So rain stretching from about the Grand Strand Hospital up to Little River. And we're going to continue to see some batches of rain move overhead throughout the morning hours and then it tapers off once we get to midday. Notice those rain chances on the decline. Now where we aren't dealing with rain, we do have some low clouds, some light fog, but the fog shouldn't slow you down. The main thing you need to be worried about are those spotty showers and the wet roadways. I'll have details on your weekend coming up at 515. 501 is your time. A reminder for you, Florence School District 1 will have classes this morning for a makeup day. It's due to missing a day last month because of that winter weather. Today was originally scheduled as a staff development day, but it will now be a full work day for all employees in the district. Oh, yeah, it is game day for Coastal Carolina as the Shans get ready to battle Wisconsin in round two of the NCAA tournament. WMBF sports reporter Damon Cutno is live from the CenturyLink Center in Omaha with a look at Coastal's competition. After falling by 11 points to then number one seed Virginia last season, the Coastal Carolina men's basketball team gets yet another shot at history, trying to become the first 16 seed ever to upset a one seed in the NCAA tournament. But up against a Badgers team with an average height of six foot ten inches, the Shants have a tall task ahead of them. Two, it's the number of all-time wins the University of Wisconsin men's basketball team has against Coastal Carolina. And as the Big Ten's regular season and tournament champions, it's also the number of trophies the Badgers have captured in recent weeks. But for UW this season, the goal has always been to earn three, and to do that, they'll have to get past Coastal Carolina. Their best shot at doing that is to use their core of lengthy players led by senior seven-footer Frank Kaminsky. The Big Ten Player of the Year, Kaminsky, has a full four inches on Coastal's tallest players, but the shots still think they can measure up tonight. Well, no, we haven't played a player quite like Kaminsky, but... Uh, we, we stick to what we do, and that's, that's the rebound, box out, and things, fundamentals of the game. And uh, we can't control the height difference or anything like that, but we can control the effort we give and, and the, uh, the focus and all of that. So we're not really worried about the, the, the name of the players. There's five guys in white jerseys they'll be wearing and five guys in teal against us. So it's the same game we've been playing all year. Just a little more on that Badgers team. The 31's win they have this season matches a school record for wins in a season. And their only three losses come to Rutgers, a game in which Kaminsky didn't play, number one seed Duke, and number four seed Maryland. Live from the CenturyLink Center, Damon Cutno, WMBF News. Damon, thanks so much for being here this morning. And don't forget about the watch party happening for the big game. The university there at Coastal Carolina holding a free event in the Student Union Game Room. It starts sharp at 9 p.m. They'll have free pizza for you to eat while watching the big matchup against Wisconsin. 504 right now. The violence last Memorial Day weekend means that this year all hands are on deck. To help police focus on your safety, the city of Myrtle Beach has decided to move the annual Memorial parade march to a different weekend. WMBF News talked to veterans who are against this, and David, some of them are taking action, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they certainly are. The local veterans we talk to say recognition of the holiday will happen. They plan to have hundreds of veterans march down Ocean Boulevard on Memorial Day, but they had to work with the city to make sure that was going to happen. It started out being a, a really small kind of core group of people that said, you know, this isn't right, we need to do something about it. And then as the word spread, it just kind of caught fire throughout the entire veteran community. 
The Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association has worked with the city leaders to come up with a plan to get you up to speed. All this started back in the fall when the city of Myrtle Beach decided to move the parade to a different date. The decision made for two reasons. One, because the city felt Myrtle Beach law enforcement would be way too busy managing crowds during Memorial Day weekend. Leaders wanted to have a parade at a time when all the city's resources were free to manage the crowds for it. Another reason, some Vietnam veterans had requested moving the parade to Armed Forces Day. So after talking with the city over the past few months, an agreement was made. There will be a Veterans March on the holiday. It's huge um, to actually have the Veterans March on Memorial Day instead of the weekend before or the weekend after. To, to actually have it on the day it's supposed to be had and, and to have it as something as simple as just the veterans marching, you know, for that one moment of recognition is, is just a massive warm, fuzzy feeling that we get. You know, it's, it's, it's a really good thing. Warm and fuzzy, perhaps, but remember, on Memorial Day, you won't be seeing a parade with floats and bells and whistles, uh, only a march on that day. The next step is to make sure the holiday is not being overshadowed by Bike Fest. Coming up in the next half hour, how the city plans to make sure that doesn't happen. Theo? Well, new this morning, a 21-year-old man is in jail after a woman says she actually woke up and found him in her bedroom. Myrtle Beach police have charged Frederick Nathaniel Guy with burglary. The woman says she first woke up after hearing a noise in her backyard. A short time later, she opened her eyes to see Guy taking her purse off the dresser and leaving her bedroom. Police were able to find him in the area of 29th Avenue North and the bypass. Meanwhile, in a developing story, seven people, including some from our area, are facing racketeering, money laundering, and drug trafficking related charges. Officials with the FBI say Vladimir Handel and David Gaither were arrested in the Florence area. The former owner of the Golds Club, Michael Rose and Peter Calise, were taken into custody in Myrtle Beach. According to investigators, the men knowingly accepted more than $2.3 million believed to be either fraudulently taken from a bankruptcy court proceeding or made from drug trafficking. Investigators say the group tried to get cocaine in order to sell it. They also believe the money was then laundered through Gold Club's franchises in many states, including the one here in Horry County that has been shut down. The FBI raided Rose home Wednesday. An indictment from the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Northern District of California shows that Rose and two of the men faced thousands of years in prison. All of the men are expected in court in San Francisco. WMBF News did reach out to some of the defendants who are either uh, they didn't wish to speak with us or they were unavailable for comment. Yeah, this is a big story. We're going to hear a lot more about this in the coming days and weeks and months. There is a push to add more security cameras to Polly's Island that would be placed at the parking lot of the beach's access on the south end of the island. Island. The mayor of Polly's Island says the idea is to add eight new cameras, which allows a string of, at, this is after a string of break-ins, not necessarily on the island, but in surrounding areas. The town is looking to get ahead of the effort to prevent crime, so visitors just don't have to worry about leaving their cars alone. The price tag for the cameras, about $2,000, then another $300 a month to manage them. They could be installed as early as Memorial Day weekend. The Taste of Surfside Beach kicks off this Saturday. It's going to run through the 28th of this month. Restaurants and other businesses will be offering discounts. Those discount cards can be bought at the Surfside Beach Town Hall and the town's South State Bank offices. There'll be $10 in advance, 12 bucks once the thing starts. A goodie bag with a list of participating businesses will be given out with each card. Proceeds are going to the local chapter of the American Red Cross. Also happening this weekend, the first hiring event for some 600 people at our local Walmart stores ahead of the tourist season. It'll be a Miller Mott Technical College on Saturday. The hiring event, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. The store in Myrtle Beach, Surfside, Mer Myrtle's Inlet, and North Myrtle Beach, all of them hiring. If you can't make this one, they'll happen again April 11th, April 25th, and May 2nd, also from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We also have a link to online applications. Look for this story at WNBFnews.com under the local tab. And a heads up about the Coastal Carolina University Spring Career Fair. More than 80 different businesses will be there. It's happening next Wednesday from 12.30 to 3.30 p.m. in the williams Bryce Kimball Arena. Some of the companies set to attend include Google, the city of Myrtle Beach, J. Rubin Long Detention Center, and Verizon Wireless. You can also find the full list in this story on WMBFnews.com under the local tab.
You'll notice some construction on the next trip to the Myrtle Beach Mall. The general manager tells us that crews are working on the entrances right now. Phase two of the improvement project includes renovating the food court. Restrooms will also be renovated and made bigger. Less than a month after two teens died in a car accident at Glens Bay and Highway 17 intersection, a family turning that tragedy into a blessing for others. 16-year-old Gavin Brunetti and 17-year-old Riley Block died of their injuries after that crash. After his death, Brunetti's mother asked the community to donate to a 7-year-old recovering from a separate accident instead of buying flowers for her son's service. That 7-year-old, Atreyu Smith, was hurt back in August in a wreck at the Sacristy Connector and and the brother of Brunetti's friends. Uh, now, Smith's family has received more than $1,500, and even more money is being raised through uh, this GoFundMe account. Well, we've told you that some parts of the U.S. saw record snowfalls uh, these past few months. No doubt, a lot of people probably felt like winter would never end. But today, thankfully, it is over. Friday marks the vernal equinox, or what we call the first day of spring. The equinox occurs when the sun is directly above the Earth's equator, and day or night are the same length. A NASA aircraft with sensors has been sent to the Ecuador for the study of volcanoes. This is the second NASA mission to the South American country. For three straight days, the NASA Airborne Science Program aircraft will study volcanoes in eruption as well as those that are active or potentially active in that country. We are interested in volcanoes in every country uh, because you never know when a volcano will become active and give you interesting data and interesting eruption. Right now, three of Ecuador's 84 volcanoes are erupting. Your quality of life, even your life itself, a stroke can take away either one. Know the first signs and you can beat this killer. We'll tell you exactly what to look for coming up. The clouds and rain will slowly be clearing out. I'll have the highs you can expect when that happens in just three minutes.